Blender. You might have heard of it. It's an insanely powerful 3D creation tool that's completely free. Yes, free. In a world where professional 3D software can cost you thousands annually, Blender stands out as a beacon of accessibility and innovation. And it's shocking in this capitalistic world that something so amazing could be given free of charge. It's unbelievable. So how did Blender, a free software, come to rival these industry giants? Well, let's rewind to where it all began. Imagine, it's 1988, in the Netherlands, a 28-year-old with a passion for bending creativity and technology. That year, Tan co-founded Neo Geo, an animation studio. Starting with just seven employees, Neo Geo quickly became the largest 3D animation studio in the Netherlands and leading a force in Europe. In 1991, they made a bold move, investing around $60,000, a massive sum at the time, in a silicon graphics computer. This machine allowed real-time wireframe and solid modeling. Yeah, they literally had to render out wireframes back in the day. I, unbelievable. I can't even comprehend that right now. I, I don't think I would be in 3D if I had to do that this day. But yeah, so they got this computer and it was a significant upgrade from the slow, inefficient Amigas they previously used. Neo Geo was producing award-winning work, snagging European corporate video awards in 1993 and 1995 with clients like Philips. But there was a problem. Tan wasn't just steering the artistic direction. He was also knee-deep in software development. He realized their in-house 3D tools were outdated, too old, too cumbersome, and they needed something new. So in 1995, Tan embarked on a bold journey to rewrite their entire 3D software system from the ground up. This rewrite became the foundation of what we now know today as Blender. Inspired by a song called Blender by Yellow, the name perfectly represented the merging of art and technology. By 1998, Tan was ready to take a leap. He founded Not A Number, NAN, a company spun off from Neo Geo to push Blender further into the world. At a time when most 3D software cost thousands, Blender was the disruptor. It aimed to democratize 3D modeling and animation, making it accessible to everyone. In 1999, they took Blender to SIGGRAPH, the premier conference for computer graphics. Blender stole the show. Attendees and the press were buzzing. A free, powerful 3D tool was unheard of. The buzz led to a significant investment of 4.5 million from venture capitalists in early 2000. NAN expanded rapidly, growing to 50 employees worldwide, all pushing Blender forward. In the summer of 2000, Blender 2.0 was released, now with an integrated game engine. By the end of the year, over 250,000 users had registered on NAN's website. But then came the dot-com bubble burst. The economic climate shifted dramatically. NAN's ambitions outpaced reality. And by April 2001, they had to downsize and restart with new investor funding. They launched Blender Publisher, aiming at interactive web-based 3D media. But sales were disappointing. The investors grew uneasy. By early 2002, they decided to pull the plug on all operations. Blender was on life support, but Tan wasn't about to let his creation die. In March 2002, Tan founded the Blender Foundation, bring Blender back as a community-based open source project. But there was a catch. To get the rights to Blender's source code, they needed 100,000 euro. So in July 2002, they launched the Free Blender campaign. With the help of the passionate Blender community and former NAN employees, they reached their goal in just seven weeks. On October 13, 2002, Blender was officially released under the GNU General Public License. Blender was free and open source.
Before Kickstarter or GoFundMe, a global community came together to save a software they believed in. Fast forward to 2008, Blender kicks off the 2.5 project, a major overhaul aiming to modernize the software's architecture and user interface. They debuted a preview at SIGGRAPH 2009, and by 2011, Blender 2.5 was officially released. But Blender wasn't just about software. The Blender Foundation started producing open movies like Elephant's Dream in 2006, Big Buck Bunny in 2008, and Sintel in 2010. These projects showcased Blender's capabilities and helped drive its development forward. Blender's versatility made it a go-to tool for visual effects in various TV shows and movies. I mean, including Red Dwarf, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, and The Man in the High Castle. Artists like Ian Huber leverage Blender's power for films like Prospect and the short film Dynamo Dream, pushing the boundaries of what could be achieved with a free tool. Even NASA used Blender to develop Experience Curiosity, an interactive web application celebrating the Curiosity rover's landing on Mars. Many of NASA's public available 3D models are in Blender's native format. Then came 2019, one of the most pivotal moments in Blender's history. Blender 2.8 was released featuring a completely revamped user interface and the introduction of Eevee, a real-time rendering engine, and significant enhancements to the Grease Pencil tool, transforming it into a full-fledged 2D animation system within a 3D environment. The industry took notice. Companies like Ubisoft announced they would use Blender to replace their internal content creation software starting in 2020. Epic Games granted $1.2 million through their Epic Mega Grants program. Blender was no longer just the underdog, it was a serious contender. Today, Tan's vision from 1988 has become a global movement. Blender continues to grow, powered by a community that believes in open source and the limitless potential of creativity. From a small Dutch studio to a worldwide phenomenon, Blender's journey is a testament to innovation, resilience, and the power of community. It shows that when people unite behind a common goal, they can create something extraordinary. If you found this story as inspiring as we did, Hit that subscribe button. Let us know in the comments what other incredible journeys you'd like us to explore. This is XR Motion, bringing you the stories that shape our digital world. Just want to let you guys know about some products we are having in our store. So we wanted to advertise to digital artists. We hope these are a great holiday, birthday, any sort of gifts for either yourself or friends, family, coworkers you name it let us know what you guys think about this because we really think they're awesome so i'm gonna cut myself off have a good one thank you so much for watching